Hello, my name is Brox, and you're listening to Youth Spin, a radio show run by Austin teenagers at Griffin School. Today, I'm discussing the road construction on US 290 with some of the residents of my neighborhood. Okay, my name is Brad Harden. I moved in to the neighborhood in 1976 with my family when I was five years old. Been here for 45 years, so I know the neighborhood well. I know the Oak Hill area well. Obviously, been here a long time. You know, I grew up in the neighborhood as a as a kid and experienced how great of a neighborhood it was. It's been great having my boys grow up in the neighborhood and and still experiencing a lot of the same things and kind of telling them how it used to be and and the things that I used to do. And then they've, as a whole, pretty much experienced that same thing. My name is Britton Bisonhurst. I live on Gallant Fox Road, right right where Gallant Fox hits 1826 on the, the southernmost side uh, of the Horseshoe. I've lived there since February of 2006, which makes it almost exactly 16 years to the day that I've lived in that house, and I like it very much. First, let's establish what's happening and where. So the city of Austin does not have great road infrastructure to accommodate the growing population of commuters who drive into the city every day, just like me. I live in Granada Hills, a neighborhood in the West Hoke Hill area at the very west end of the 290 construction project. I have to drive through most of the series of activities currently on the road in order to get to school each day. The traffic was already bad. It takes about 12 minutes to go six miles to the Best Buy at the end of West 290, and that is slow, about 30 miles an hour on average, which is the same as the speed limit in my neighborhood. So as you can imagine, I have to budget some extra time in my daily commute. But with the construction, things are going to get even slower. Well, I, I think really just alleviating the, the the traffic backlog. I think it'll I think it'll uh, you know improve the the flow of traffic for sh- for sure. And like I said, it's been such a um, a challenge for so many years in getting through Oak Hill and making the connections back into Austin. Um, that I, I think it will really uh, improve that. Now, since this only goes a little bit past uh you know our neighborhood i think it's i think it's gonna create you know some issues still out west out towards dripping springs i think now maybe that that will eventually get resolved but i think now you know once again as i mentioned i think it's been such a necessary thing and it is hard to see oak hill changing so drastically but uh, at the same time i do feel like it is a necessary thing in order to just get the people uh, to the places they need to be in a, in, in, you know, in a timely manner. Well, absolutely. I think, you know, for me, it's all about what happens at 1826 when I, and then when I turn right and head eastbound towards Mopac and towards the airport, or left and head westbound towards Dripping Springs, does that congestion Im- improve? And I think that's the whole point. If it doesn't improve, we've made a very expensive mistake. If they do it, right if they do a good job if it's been planned out by the engineers and the brains properly then it should alleviate or at least dramatically diminish the congestion that occurs even where that pizza place was and where the baseball fields are the you know basically the entrance to oak hill from there all the way sometimes to dripping springs like it's a parking lot you know and i think the whole idea is which something has to be done about this congestion and and the and the traffic problems that we have currently traffic has the minimal amount of slowdown from construction but later on in the process lanes will have to be closed and that will slow down traffic so why are they doing construction on 290 the reason is that the texas department of transportation is trying to reduce the bottleneck traffic. They're trying to add new lanes to the road to make it wider. And to do that, they will first have to create temporary lanes on the other side of the road while they close the current lanes. The site of the new road is set where woods and cliffs used to be on my side of the road. At the entrance of my neighborhood and other areas along 290, construction crews have cleared this trees and shrubs and started laying the groundwork for the actual road to be built. The sawdust from those trees was piled up and can be seen in steaming stacks, decomposing and waiting to be picked up for some unceremonious industrial use. So far, 
we have definitely noticed an uptick in commercial construction type traffic, dirt trucks, dirt movers, you know, big dump truck kind of things rolling down our street. There is speculation, but I think it's beyond speculation at this point. It's been confirmed that some of those trucks have a reason to be there because of building new houses and new things within the neighborhood. But some of those trucks are using Gallant Fox and I believe even Adobe and El Rey to cut through from 1826 to get to 290 instead of going 1826 to 290. That's been a, an irritation, and actually I'm concerned about the ultimate long-term effects that those heavy, heavy trucks are going to have on our residential streets, which weren't really intended to handle those kinds of weights and loads. Uh, so that's a main one. Another one is, you know, when using 290, whether you're going east or west, they have decimated what will ultimately be the... Uh, access roads or the the side roads of this 290 expansion there used to be trees there used to be screen from whatever is on either side of of 290 and it was aesthetically much much nicer to drive down 290 prior to the decimation of thousands of cedar trees and and the dirt work that they've done and so just another effect is the aesthetic they've Diminish the aesthetic quality of the drive, which is kind of a, a nitpicky irritant. It's not really affecting my life other than uh -huh. in a Dr. Seuss, you know, kind of way. Really, with as much as Austin has changed, that the neighborhood has has stayed the same. Now, as far as like what they're doing out on the highway, yeah, obviously a lot of trees are getting cut down. It's going to drastically change the the entrance into the neighborhood. Yes, the landscape, the views along the highway are, are gonna, gonna certainly be impacted. And it is sad to see the trees, uh, especially being cut down and, and, and the changes being made up there. As the government website will tell you, construction and the machinery involved creates lots of noise, light, and dust for the people on the outskirts of my neighborhood. As far as dust, no, I think we're far enough away from the construction where we're at um, and as a whole in the neighborhood, that hadn't been an issue. Yes, noise, we can certainly hear the you know, the, the big equipment whenever it's working up there on the highway. Not super noticeable. We're far enough away to where it's not n not a huge issue. But, but yeah, when they're out there working, and especially when we're in our backyard, not not in the house, we don't necessarily hear it. Uh, but when we're outside, we can hear it. Not, not, um, not an annoyance by any means, but just a noticeable thing for sure. Presently, the topsoil in the area has been cleared, exposing the dry, crusty dermis of Texas. On top of the dust, workers are laying stones and spreading them evenly. The rest of the process is only speculation on my part, but the brains behind the operation have a What to Expect page on the Oak Hill Parkway website. According to website, the project will last five years, from summer of last year, 2021, all the way to 2026. At some point, it will stop. Unfortunately, I think it's going to take so long that I'm not it's hard to see that and look forward to that because it's so far away it's like looking forward to you know something that's hard to imagine well I understand it's I think it's a necessary thing this has been coming for a really really long time and as many people that have moved out here unfortunately I feel like it is a necessary thing but as far as the neighborhood goes, I don't think it's really going to affect it that much. Yes, coming into the neighborhood, it's going to look totally different. But Granada Hills itself has been such a cool uh, neighborhood in that it has pretty much remained the same since it was constructed back in the mid-70s and into the 80s as far as the development goes. Um, and I don't see that really changing, which I think is incredible. The plan is that this year they're starting construction on SH-71 and the interchange with 290, known by locals as the Y. They say that information regarding construction from this year until the finish of the project will be available later. Basically, the big picture is that the rock on the south side of 290 will be excavated to add a new lane on top of the cliff where the ground level was before the whole of 290 was excavated, which happens a lot in what is basically hill country. At some point in the future, the road will be paved, requiring a supply of concrete. According to the website, quote, beginning in 2022, CRC will operate a temporary wet concrete batch plant along the project corridor, end quote. The CRC, by the way, stands for the Colorado River Constructors. And said concrete plant being built is what's causing some controversy in my area. 
So today I'm trying to find out how everyone in my neighborhood feels about the ethics of creating this plant. As far as the concrete plant, you know, I don't know. That's a, I guess that's an unknown. Um, I kind of have mixed feelings on, on the concrete plant too. Um, once again, I know it's a necessary thing in order to, to keep the construction going and keep it going in a timely manner. I think it's just, uh, you know, kind of one of those things where it's not desirable to think about or to have it, uh, but I know it's a temporary thing just during the construction, and I think it's just a, a necessary, I'm sorry, a necessary process of getting the construction done in a timely manner. I, I know that it's proposed. I don't know that it was, it, it's been approved. The one that would allegedly be where the ACC Pinnacle Campus is. I know about it. I know that the construction folk would like for there to be a concrete plant. I also know that there is a concrete plant not very far westward up to 90 before Dripping Springs already in that 290 general vicinity. There already is a concrete plant. So I don't think that we really need another concrete plant. And I also know that concrete plants are dusty and noisy. They obviously have the flow of concrete trucks in and out of them. So I am a thousand percent anti-concrete plant. My blood pressure is increasing thinking about it because that's like right there, you know. Does the noise ever influence your recording or is it kind of... Similar? Not yet, but I am the concrete plant one. So the types of noise, some of the noises that a concrete plant would make would be subsonic. If they're, if they're digging, if they're using heavy equipment that is booming and causing low frequencies, those types of things can travel for miles. And those are the types of things that some of my microphones would definitely detect, even if the human ear couldn't. And it, yeah, I'm deeply concerned about how that particular thing can affect. But then also the overpass is high enough that they're building. We're all going to be hearing traffic like we've never heard it before here. Do I worry about how that could affect the studio? Most definitely. I'm very concerned about it. The, the only types of things that get through my walls and roof right now are the garbage truck, mostly because of those low frequency sounds that occur when those big heavy pieces of metal move around, but then also thunder. So it's really the low frequencies that I, that I have to worry about. And those are the types of frequencies that a concrete plant will produce. Ultimately, I think there could be a real noise pollution impact, not just to my studio, but to the whole neighborhood. And I think it's going to suck. Does it, is it going to devalue or diminish the value of our homes and our quality of life? That's, I mean, that's yet to be determined, you know. Uh, I hope not. The realist in me says probably, and the pessimist in me says it definitely will. So if we were really, really smart and didn't love where we lived, we would move right now. Our house has never been worth more than it is right now. And it's almost got nowhere to go but down after, like, you know. So if we were really just, like, all about the Benjamins, like, now is the time. And it would sell in a day and we'd be done. But, like, I don't want to move. Where am I going to go? Because everything's expensive. Once again, I think, especially for us that have lived here for an extended period, we've kind of known this was coming. And it's kind of surprising it's taken this long. Fortunate it's taken this long, truthfully, because, uh, you know, I certainly like how, you know, Oak, Oak Hill has, has been as far as its appearances go. And I know this is, once again, drastically changing it. But at the same time, we knew it was coming. This new road is going to be a toll road. Like, it's going to obviously have non-pay lanes east and west bound, but I have some pretty hot sports opinions about, like, what the hell is happening with our taxes? Why does everything need to be a toll road now? Which means it's, it's a private road. It's not built. Austin's not building this road. I forget who, but it's private. Like, a private company is building a road. A private company will own the road. Meanwhile, we're paying, now we and every citizen of Austin are paying ridiculous, ridiculous taxes like crazy time and meanwhile our, our schools suck and our roads suck and we can't we can't afford the good schools we can't afford good roads where is all this money going like and why do we need private companies building our public roads all of a sudden it's never been like that why every time i want to go fast from oak hill to dripping springs why do i gotta pay for it i already pay taxes i've lived here for Whatever, like I, I, I pay my share. Why do I gotta pay to drive down the road? I thought we 
we're having a civilization here where we all chip in and the roads are free. But now all of a sudden, I don't know where taxes are going, but we're also paying for the roads on top of the taxes. That's bullshit. Like, you know, if you go to St. Louis or Detroit, you know, you see what happens if you don't embrace change and growth and, and like pivot with the times. People leave and then you have a ghost town. And like St. Louis has like 30%, I'm just making up numbers, but like this huge occupancy, like they have empty buildings and, you know, people stop moving there. I am all for change and growth. You have to embrace it. And that's why I like the project, the idea of widening 290, it needs to happen. It's going to suck, but it needs to happen. I, I accept that. Did we plan it well? How's it getting paid for? Why does it need to be private? Why does it need to be a toll road? Those are the things I, I have an issue with. What the hell is happening with Austin? And where is all this tax money going? Why are our schools so poor? Why, why are we paying private companies to build our roads? Why do I see supercars every day now? And yet they can't keep the air conditioning on in the movie. Like what is going on?